Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Wrestling vs. the World podcast. If you're enjoying your day, sweet. If not, whatever. So, I had... This was one of the earliest topics that I had written in my notes that I wanted to discuss on the podcast. And that was Jeff Hardy's entire WWE run from 2006 to 2009. Yeah, so I'm going an entire three-year gap time period rather than just one solid year. So, let us get started. So, if we remember the last time we saw Jeff Hardy on WWE television, this was back in 2003, before he was suddenly released due to a myriad of reasons. I mean, like tardiness, burnout, lack of performance issues, so on and so forth. So, following this, Jeff Hardy would take time off wrestling and also appear in TNA. But in 2006, Jeff Hardy would make his WWE return following a few weeks of vignettes. He would make his on-screen return on the August 21st, 2006 edition of Raw the night after SummerSlam when he interrupted Edge's WWE Championship unveiling ceremony when Edge unveiled the new custom design that he had for the championship with the Rated R logo on there. Later on, Jeff Hardy would face Edge in a one-on-one match, but the match would end up getting interrupted by John Cena, who was still feuding with Edge at the time. And after this, Jeff would then move on to a feud with Johnny Nitro over the Intercontinental Championship. And after failing for a few weeks to win the Intercontinental Championship, Jeff would finally win the championship from Johnny Nitro on the October 2nd, 2006 edition of SmackDown, starting his second reign with the belt. But then after losing the championship back to Johnny Nitro a month later on the August 6th, 2006 edition of Raw, Jeff would regain it back the following week. After this, Jeff would then reform the Hardy Boys for the first time in what, three or four years after this? So he would start reforming the Hardy Boys as 2006 went into 2007. The Hardy was with team with CM Punk and DX go to cleanly sweep Team Rated RKO at Survivor Series and would also go on to defeat Eminem at the December to Dismember pay-per-view. Now, after this, the Hardys would fail to win the WWE Tag Team Championships at Armageddon in a fatal four-way tag team ladder match, a match most infamous for Joey Mercury suffering serious facial injuries caused by Jeff Hardy with a bit of a ladder impact. After Jeff Hardy would retain the Intercontinental Championship at New Year's Revolution against Johnny Nitro in a steel cage match, he would then team up with Je- with his brother Matt to successfully defeat Eminem at the Royal Rumble, as well as a six-man tag match that included Chris Benoit MVP at No Way Out. However, the night after No Way Out, Jeff would lose the Intercontinental Championship on the February 19, 2007 edition of Raw to Umaga, but then would rebound to qual- by qualifying to become a participant in the Money Bank ladder match at WrestleMania 23, However, instead of winning the match, Jeff would take himself out of the match as well as Edge after jumping off a 20-foot ladder in the ring to drive himself into Edge, who was laying on a bridging ladder between the ring apron and the barricade, taking both men out on stretchers. But the next night, Hardys would once again rebound after they would win the second battle royal of that night to become World Tag Team Champions when John Cena and Shawn Michaels were forced to put their tag team titles on the line in back-to-back battle royals that night before then moving on to a feud with Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch. After successfully retaining the tag team titles against Cade and Murdoch at Backlash and Judgment Day, as well as against the World's Greatest Tag Team in a Tag Team Ladder Match When I Stand, Hardys would then lose the Tag Team Championships to Cade and Murdoch the following night, and this would kind of start to dissipate a bit of the Hardy Boys tag matches until, because it became more sporadic after this. Following this, Jeff would then set his sights on the back on the Intercontinental Championship against Umaga, but after failing to defeat Umaga for the championship at the Great American Bash, Jeff would disappear from television for a month. Jeff would claim on his website that he took was recovering from a bad bump that he took in a match against Mr. Kennedy on Raw, but he was revealed on his My Life, My Rules DVD that he failed a wellness policy, taking something he shouldn't have, got busted, and had to serve a 30-day suspension. Upon Jeff's return after SummerSlam, he would resume, resume his feud with Maga and would defeat him to win the Intercontinental Championship on the September 3rd, 2007 edition of Raw. And after this, Jeff started to go on a bit of a singles or good singles push. At Survivor Series, Triple H's team would successfully defeat Umaga's team in a 4-on-5 tag team handicap elimination match, with Jeff and Triple H becoming the sole survivors of their team. Both men would start to go on a bit of a mini-feud going into Armageddon based on respect, and both men would collide in a one-on-one match at Armageddon, which saw Jeff get the surprise victory on Triple H to become number one contender for Randy Orton's WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble. During the feud, things would get really personal as Matt Hardy, who was legitimately recovering from appendicitis, would get attacked by Randy Orton backstage, which included a punt to the head. Hardy would then still build up his momentum when he defeated Umaga with a huge whisper in the wind off the top of the steel cage on the January 7, 2008 edition of Raw. And the following week, Jeff Hardy would do a massive swanton bomb off the Raw stage on the January 14, 2008 edition of Raw to Randy Orton off the side of the stage. 
Despite this massive build, Randy would still end up retaining the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble. Now, after failing to become the WWE number one contender to the WWE Championship at WrestleMania and the Elimination Chamber match at No Way Out, Jeff would start to face rough times in his career due to real-life issues. After quali Despite qualifying to win the Money in the Bank ladder match for WrestleMania 24, Jeff would suddenly lose the Intercontinental Championship to Chris Jericho on the March 10, 2008 edition of Raw and would miss WrestleMania 24 due to a second wellness policy violation. So therefore, he had to serve 60-day suspension. Jeff would return on the, on the May 12, 2008 edition of Raw to defeat Umaga and would resume their feud and later defeat the Simone Bulldozer at the One Night Stand pay-per-view in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Now, after this, during the 2008 edition of the WWE Draft, Jeff Hardy would be drafted for a more out of SmackDown, and after failing to defeat MVP at SummerSlam, Jeff would go on to compete in the WWE Championship Scramble match at, Un at Unforgiven, almost winning the match at the end, but Je with Triple H would end up getting the final fall within the closing moments of the match to retain the championship. Jeff would then continue, would continue to go after the WWE Championship against Triple H, and despite, after failing to win the championship against Triple H in one-on-one -on -one matches at No Mercy and Cyber Sunday, Hardy would be scheduled to compete against both Triple H and Vladimir Kozlov at Survivor Series in a triple threat match, but he was written out in storyline following being found unconscious in the stairwell, stairwell of the hotel he was staying at at the time. During the match itself, as the match was in its closing moments, Edge would become the final participant in the match and would take, Edge, could take Jeff Hardy's spot, therefore winning the match despite Jeff's interference. After, despite this, Jeff would still get another opportunity at the WWE Championship at Armageddon in a triple threat match against the new WWE Champion Edge and fellow challenger former WWE Champion Triple H. In the closing moments of the match, after Triple H hit the pedigree on Edge, Jeff would break the pin with a swanton bomb off the top rope and pin Edge to win the WWE Championship for the only time in his career. Despite this, Jeff would face many f misfortunes leading into the Royal Rumble. At one moment, Jeff would be run off the road in a hit-and-run accident and would also suffer a pyro malfunction when he was scheduled to be a special guest on the Cutting Edge right before the Royal Rumble. At the Royal Rumble event, unfortunately, Jeff's only WWE title run would end at that peer view in a no-DQ match against Edge after his brother Matt interfered in the match and hit his own brother with a steel chair to the head. So following this, leading into WrestleMania, the Hardy Boys would go into a feud with a storyline centering around Matt's jealousy of his brother's success and popularity compared to his despite him being an older Hardy Boy, and there would be implications in the feud that Matt was behind all of Jeff's misfortunes, including the hit and run accident, the power malfunction, and they would also talk about the real life burning of Jeff's house as the year went on. Despite this whole, with this whole feud going on, Matt would un still end up going to defeat Jeff in an Extreme Rules at WrestleMania, following a twist of fate in a steel chair, and also went into the ladder, or sorry, the stretcher match on the April 10, 2009 edition of SmackDown. But Jeff would win the match that would conclude the feud, being the I Quit match at Backlash. Now, after this, Jeff would then set his sights on Edge in the World Heavyweight Championship after Backlash, and after becoming number one contender for the pay-per-view, Jeff would still fail to win the championship against Edge due to interference by Matt, but would then later on go on to gain another shot for the title at Extreme Rules in a ladder match, match which Jeff Hardy would win after trapping Edge in part of some of the rungs of the ladder to become World Heavyweight Champion for the first time, but afterwards would lose the championship to CM Punk through his money to bank cash in and having to take two GTS's to drop the championship. So this would then progress Jeff into his feud with CM Punk, which would break into their real life styles of both men and how they collided, with CM Punk living the straight edge society, or straight edge lifestyle, and Jeff living the more extreme, on the edge, carefree lifestyle, which of course involved alcohol and drugs. Jeff would gain his one on one rematch for the championship at the, at the Bash Pay Review, but would win via disqualification after CM Punk feigned an, uh, feigned an eye injury and hit a roundhouse kick to the referee making the match end in a disqualification. After Jeff then questioned the validity of CM Punk's eye injury, Punk would turn heel by attacking Jeff with a microphone and a beatdown. So this would lead to a rematch in Night of Champions, and Jeff would regain the championship for his second and final reign as the World Heavyweight Champion. Punk would later get his rematch at SummerSlam and would regain the championship from Jeff in a TLC match, but then the feud would later on conclude on the August 28, 2009 edition of SmackDown in a steel cage match where the winner would become World Heavyweight Champion and the loser would be leaving WWE. Not only would CM Punk win the match to retain the World Heavyweight Championship, but as the stipulation stated, Jeff Hardy would leave the WWE, would give his farewell address to the crowd after losing the match, kind of clap everybody's hands, give away his armbands, and as he stood on the stage to wave farewell to the fans, Punk would get the last laugh by hitting Jeff Hardy with the World Heavyweight Championship and posing above his unconscious body to close the show. 
And as, of course, we remember the following week, fans will be tricked into thinking Jeff Hardy was back, only for CM Punk to come out imitating Jeff Hardy with the face paint and everything. Kind of a nice way to troll the crowd. And this would, and the last match that we saw with Jeff Hardy would be the final time we would see Jeff Hardy in WWE until WrestleMania 33, because following the loss of the Steel Cage match, Jeff Hardy would leave to recover from nagging injuries, and would also have real-life drug issues, and would later debut and return to TNA. So we wouldn't see Jeff Hardy for about another seven and a half years following this loss on SmackDown. So you look at this overall three-year run with Jeff Hardy, Yes, it was fantastic in some ways because, like, he had some stellar matches and he got finally got the big push that he never got within his recent run or his prior run, but things really got derailed and caused WWE have trust issues because of his two wellness policy violations in less than a year. Like I said, he had one in the summer of 2007 and then had another one right before WrestleMania. And there's rumors that he was supposed to have won the Money in the Bank ladder match, but instead they had to give that to CM Punk instead. So... Yeah, they eventually made him WWE Champion and World Heavyweight Champion, but they cut those reins short because they had trust issues with him because of his history with drugs and getting suspended and everything. So you never knew if he was going to stay sober long enough to not have any issues. I mean, don't forget what happened with Rob Van Dam two years prior before he won the WWE Championship for the first time because came RVD was champion, drug issue, boom, had to drop the title because of suspension. So had, there were serious trust issues there. But regardless, like, his WWE title run was one of those amazing, or his win at Armageddon was one of those amazing moments. Like, JR screaming, Jeff Hardy's real life is a dream of a lifetime. Celebrating with the crowd with and the celebration on SmackDown afterwards with Confetti and Pyro. It was amazing. The feud with CM Punk, even though it was based on real life stuff and everything, it was still fantastic because you had real life re lifestyles competing against each other. Straight Edge versus a carefree lifestyle, and that made the feud even more intense. So it's like Jeff had a lot of amazing matches during this time and a lot of great feuds and everything like that. Overall, if I had to give Jeff's run in WWE during this three-year period a grade, I'd give it at least a B because with those suspensions and everything still gave setbacks to where I had to knock off grades because who knows how things would have been if he didn't get suspended. Because like I said, there was rumors that WrestleMania 24 he was going to win the Money in the Bank ladder match. So who knows how things would have been there and maybe his title runs could have been a little bit longer. I mean, yeah, he would have had the injuries that would have taken him away again in 2009, but who knows how plans would have been if there weren't those trust issues and drugs and everything like that. So anyway, let me know what you all thought in the comment section below about Jeff Hardy's WWE run from 2006 all the way up until his departure in 2009. If you enjoyed today's episode, folks, of the podcast, please remember, leave a like, subscribe, and turn the bell on if you're watching this on YouTube, or follow if you're listening to this on any other service that you can hear this podcast on, and I will catch you all in the next episode. Thanks for listening, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, and good day, everybody.